In this video, we take you as far south as you can go in the U.S to beautiful Key West, Florida. We show you where to stay and what to do in this tropical town built on fun, fine food, and knock your socks off sunsets. Just a brief explanation before we show you the video on uh, Key West. Just after we finished shooting this and we left the Keys, well, you know what happened, the coronavirus pandemic and no unnecessary travel bans and everybody on lockdown. And uh, that, uh, that happened just a couple of days after and uh, as we're releasing this video, we're still under lockdown and uh, this is now mid-April of 2020. We are in Florida in the Panhandle. We have a condo in the area, so we are staying here during this lockdown, waiting for things to get back to normal and to be able to travel again. So everything that you see in this video, the crowds, everybody on the streets and everything, it was okay then. It was okay then and it will be okay again. And to help you get excited about going to Key West in your RV, we're gonna bring you with us as we visited it last month. So come on along to Key West, Florida. U.S. Highway 1, also known as the Overseas Highway, going from Miami to the Florida Keys, about 150 miles, and beautiful it is. RVers, this has to be one of the most in-demand camping areas anywhere in the U.S. Some of the sites here at Boyd are absolutely spectacular. Like this camper van. Does this view get any better than this? This is our campsite at Boyd's. It's a little tight, but it's home. Home indeed. That's not a bad site, is it? It looks like this site has a lot of room because this site is empty. <laughs> There's not a lot of room there. Boyd's has a great pavilion area. They have yoga classes here, and wine tastings, talent shows. It's just a great gathering place. Boyd's Campground has been around since the 50s. It's extremely popular, despite the fact that the spots are very narrow. Uh, that's the way they were in the 50s. And the people who stay here come year after year. Now, you can get a spot for a week or two, but you gotta call way, way in advance to get them, and the staff will work with you maybe get you in one site for a couple of nights and then move to another. But to get here for a season, like most of the folks here on this stretch are, you have to book a year in advance. These folks, they're here for four months at a time and many of them have been coming here for year after year. But as nice as Boyd's may be, this is where we have a lot of exploring to do. Key West, the southernmost town in the United States. Downtown Key West is about five miles down US-1 from the campground to the very end of the road. There's not a lot of room to park an RV downtown, so we rented a golf cart to head downtown for some sightseeing. So how do you like traveling in a golf cart downtown? I would prefer a car. It is uncomfortable, it's bumpy. You can't go any more than 20 miles an hour. The speed limit's 35. People are moving around. It's not good. Key West is not a friendly place for RVs. Maybe if you have a Class B. I haven't seen any Class Bs down there either, Mike. Well, maybe. If Plus, I look you like, have not mentioned this golf cart cost a fortune. Yeah, like 300 and something bucks for uh, four days. I think we went out the door. We got it too low. <laughs> Live and learn. I bet they can't even hear us talking. That's how unpleasantly loud this is. Oh, 
Okay, this has been an adventure, renting a golf cart. If I had it to do over, I would rent a car because you can't take an RV into Key West. So the first day, the three of us sat in the front seat and we gave many photo ops to everybody out there as the three of us sat in the front seat. Well, this morning, Bo sat in the front seat, I sat in the back. And right now, you can see Bo and I are gonna take the back and hopefully this is gonna work. Bo does not like bumps. So uh, at least I'm here to keep, to comfort him. It's hard traveling with a pet, and sometimes you have to find doggy daycare, you have to make arrangements for your pet. And we found Abigail and Stitch not far from our campground, and here we go. Come on, Bo. Are you ready to go play? here where the dogs can play. Nice shade. This is the doggies living room. I'd like you to learn from what we consider a mistake. In an RV there isn't any place to park in Key West so you need a car. So if you don't tow a car you need to rent a car or maybe Uber. Uber would also be good. Or if you're a really good cyclist, you can bicycle. But we have a 65-pound dog that we also have to factor into our traveling and getting here and there. This is where it all starts. This is mile zero. And this is where you go only one way north. You can't go any further south than this. If you're lucky enough to find a parking spot on the street, you can pay getting using the machines that they have. It's four dollars an hour. You've got to remember that this is an island two miles by four miles. So if you're lucky enough to find a spot, great. Since we're new to Key West, we've got to get the feel of the land. So the best way to do that is to take a tour. So we're going to get on this tour and we're going to look around, get off as often as we want, get a feel for this place. Then we'll know what we want to focus in on. It's just good advice whenever you're at a place like Key West uh, and you, you know there's a lot you want to see, a tour like this will give you uh, a really good overview and then you can go back and see things uh, for longer periods of time. So come on along with us trolley tour. We'll save you a hundred bucks. That's what it costs for two of us. Before tourism, one of the major occupations here in Key West was called shipwrecking. They got to understand that just offshore is a reef, one of the largest, the third largest, longest reef in the world. And um, almost every other week there would be a shipwreck out there. And under the rules, the maritime rules at the time, uh, whatever cargo was lost in that shipwreck was fair game if you could restore it and if you could claim it yourself. So shipwrecking became this occupation. Key West folks would go out in boats like this. Uh, this is called Mary, this one. It's a restoration. It's kind of falling apart, but a lot of original stuff. And they would go out there. They'd rescue the crew and uh, get them to safety. But then the spoils of that wreck were theirs. And there were so many spoils, in fact, that Key West became the richest city in America for a number of years because they, they got so much of the booty that was wrecked on that reef. Key West, long before Jimmy Buffett made it famous. You can see a tower. They had towers stationed all around the island. Whenever there was a shipwreck, 
someone up on that tower would yell out so everybody would know to get out there, rescue the people, and rescue whatever was on that ship. And then later, all the spoils would be divided amongst all the people of the island. This iconic buoy is one of the most photographed places in Key West. Cuba, 90 miles away, but what you don't see in those photos is how long the line is to get your picture taken. On uh, Duval Street, which is the heart of the entertainment area, the bars in uh, Key West. What does this place remind you of? New Orleans. Yeah. Smells like New Orleans. <laughs> it, uh, there was a lot of partying here, I think, last night. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of like New Orleans. It's uh, a little more Caribbean flair. To the field, fifty yard line, a blank and a curve. So ask me why I will I go back? Watching someone go too far, rolling up too fast, and I do recall wrong. If I go back. So does that taste pretty good? Yeah, it's very refreshing on a hot day. Mango. Mm -hmm. I like mango. Isn't this the place where you're supposed to get margaritas and daiquiris and frozen concoctions? I believe so. No visit to Key West is complete without going to Margaritaville. This is the original place where Jimmy Buffett started it all. Margaritaville, Key West. You know, Jim, this is the frozen concoction that helps me hang on or make you fall down. Remember, it's just a little after 11. Yeah, but when in Key West, you gotta do what Jimmy Buffett does. This is what it's like at 11.30 in the morning. Can you imagine what it's like at night? I bet they're lined up out the door. What you do in Key West is eat out. We're at an outside restaurant, which is absolutely perfect, nice and cool. It doesn't rain much here, so good weather, eat out. And the place that we picked is called the First Flight uh, Cafe. And it is originally the headquarters where Pan Am Airways was started. Uh, its claim to fame now is it is the southernmost microbrewery in the U.S. Cheers.
hope you enjoy him the same. I know that it's pretty. The name is Oscar, and that is Maya. <laughs> We are at the Hogfish Grill and they are supposed to have the best fish sandwich around. So can't wait to try it. Looks like some mushrooms and Swiss cheese on top of the fish. Ooh, quite interesting. And the name of the fish is what? The name of the fish is hogfish. Have you ever eaten hogfish before? No. It doesn't sound very appetizing. No, it doesn't sound very appetizing. And in Key West, you have to have key lime pie. But my rule is whenever you're in Florida, any part of Florida is a good excuse to have key lime pie. It's one of my favorites. The Key West is where it comes yeah, key from. West, yeah, gotta have the key lime pie. I love key lime pie. I'm this is Bogan Vila and they're beautiful. They're all over Key West. They're in bloom, they're lovely. can expect to pay for just about everything you want to do in Key West. The Hemingway home, 15 bucks to get in. Any of the museums, they all have pretty stiff admission fees. Uh, Key West is not a cheap town for the tourists. Even if you RV your way, you're going to spend a fortune in an RV camp. Uh, many of them are uh, 100 plus bucks a night. Uh, budget a lot of money if you're going to come to Key West. going to look at chickens the same after being at Key West with all these free-range chickens running all over the place and they're even pretty they're very colorful they got chickens they got chickens Key West chickens now these chickens all came from back uh, many, many years ago when uh, they uh, did uh, cockfighting here. And eventually that was declared illegal, and so the mostly Bahamian people who were doing that, uh, that were living in Key West at the time, just let all the chickens go. And now they're actually protected because Key West is a bird sanctuary. So, no harvesting the chickens. Got to tell Bo that. This is Mallory Square, and every night at sunset, a party spontaneously happens. Many people gather together to watch the sun go down.
when we look at that video, it just seems so strange to see everybody so close together and no social distancing. How quickly we get used to unusual. Unusual, but the usual will come back. And we uh, thought that video will help you get excited about uh, scheduling a visit to Key West. We can help some more because we have a book, a seven day adventure guide to the Florida Keys and Key West. It's one of uh, a whole series, a, a virtual library of seven-day adventure travel guides for different regions of the country that Jennifer and I have done. Uh, but go to rvlifestyle.com slash books and you can uh, check out these really neat little guides that'll help you figure out where to go, what to see, where to stay, even a route that you should take so you don't miss a thing. Hey, we had a great time in Key West and we can't wait to go back when things uh, get back to normal. We hope to see you out there on the road. Thanks so much for watching. Happy trails.